Ah, good day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. It's a weekend. I suppose the people in the city and the town are looking forward to something a bit different. They don't have to go to work, a lot of them. It's not that way around here. I thought I was going to have an easy day today and then, oh well, neighbour rang up and said, oh, one of your bulls was over here last night, so this morning I have to go looking for him. Then Pat said, oh, we've got to take the rubbish to the dump. The man doesn't come to the front door and take the rubbish away. And I said, oh, OK, but I want to get firewood. We're nearly out of, we're nearly out of firewood. So we worked out we've got to go to the dump, empty the ute of the rubbish, then come back and collect a load of firewood and cut it up. So no having a day off and hanging around the mall, that's for sure. I started off by heading out the back, looking for him and couldn't find him over the creek. Kept going, looking everywhere, having a look at the fences, couldn't find any sign of him. Looking, looking. I'll leave the back gate open and he might come back in that way. Out the back of our place there's a bit of a dirt road. It's only a one lane track for cars. So I drove all up and down that everywhere and looked. I couldn't see a footprint, a sign, no manure, nothing. Couldn't see any sign of him anywhere. After I went out the back and looked everywhere and found no sign of him, I've come out the front and looked everywhere along the main road and I still can't find any sign of him. I went down another track and had a bit of a look in the bottom of the creek in case he'd been there, but no. Well, I've looked around everywhere and I can't find him so far. I don't know where he's gone. Have to hope he comes home, I suppose. Off to the tip we go. As you can probably see, we haven't done a dump run for a long time. We were on our way to the tip, and lo and behold, here was our missing bull. He'd gone over to visit the cows at the other place. So I was really relieved about that. Anyway, we got him and put him back in. He's a dark red fella at the back there. And I think what he's after is cows. He's probably getting at that age where he thinks he needs to start working, I'd say. He don't think much of that, did he? Our local council supplies this green bin. In our rates we pay a levy for it and we can dump our kitchen waste, etc. in this. The only rule is it has to be able to fit in those holes or lids or whatever you call them. If it's bigger than that, you can't put it in there, of course. I measured how far it was to the dump from our place, a bit over 8 kilometres. On the way home we stopped at the front paddock and I cut down a tree that was dead. Pat had a go at it the other day but she ran out of battery. Anyway, it's afternoon and I'm now getting on to the job that I wanted to do first thing this morning. <laughs> Just shows you. Things never run smooth sometimes. Having said that, I suppose things have worked out. We have got rid of the rubbish and we have got the bull back. All I've got to do now is get this tree down safely and cut up. And it'll have been a reasonable day. I'm just going to cut this up into reasonably large sort of pieces and then take it home and cut it up on the drop saw that I bought recently. Thank you. 
You may be wondering why I don't just cut it all up in the paddock with a chainsaw. I just find this is a lot easier on my back than having to bend over swinging off a chainsaw to just cut little bits of wood. The other thing I like about it is I just put it in the wheelbarrow as I cut it and wheel it over to the house where the stove is. Ah, it's Sunday morning. The first thing I'm going to do is water our vegetable garden and then I'll get on to my other jobs. I can see here that I need to set a trap for a bandicoot that keeps getting into my garden. He's been digging it up here, so that's one thing I'm going to have to do. My potatoes need a bit of a water, so I'll do that. You can see the damn bandicoot, he's been digging up here. I had plants in here and he's dug them all up. So I'm going to get the trap and set that in a while. This is the trap I'm going to try and catch the bandicoot in. And I'm going to try and use bread and honey for bait. I don't know if bandicoots like bread and honey, but we'll see. First thing I'll do is put some bait in the trap. That plate down the back there is hooked to this bit of wire which just sits on this little catch here where the orange is. And when the animal walks in and steps on that plate, it pulls that bit of wire back and the door at the front falls down and locks closed with this sliding bar. And then you've caught the animal. What I do is take the cage and all in the car or the ute a long way away and then release it where it won't cause any trouble. Like every other day we have to feed the animals and we've given the chooks theirs. Now it's time for the bulls and the heifers. Some of the bulls are here waiting for their tucker. They'll probably more will come up when Pat comes down. Every morning Hector, the Jack Russell and the bulls say good day to each other. They're pretty good friends. You wonder why they put up with him, but they seem to, they seem to like him. Even the mothers with calves don't seem to worry about him. Maybe because he's small, they just think he's no threat to them or something. I've noticed all day that the sky is getting darker and darker. I think it's smoko Tom. I better have a look on the computer and see what the weather's going to do. It looks a bit threatening. I went in and had a look at the computer and the weather bureau reckons that next week we're going to be in for heavy rain, or could be. And unfortunately, even though I cut wood yesterday, we won't have enough if we get a week of rain, so I better go and get some more. So that's going to take up the rest of Sunday. One thing's for sure in the country, things change from minute to minute. In the front paddock at home, we've got this big dead tree. And it's got a lot of limbs at the top of it to cut up for firewood. So I'm going to fell it and cut some of it up for firewood. And over a period of time, we'll cut it all up and use it for firewood or whatever. Here I'm just looking up at the tree, making absolutely sure that the tree is going to fall the way I want it to. The first thing I'll do is cut a wedge shaped piece out of the bottom of the tree the, towards the way where I want the tree to fall. This is normally called a scarf. And then I'll go around the other side and cut above the scarf a little bit so there's a step and so the trunk doesn't come back onto me. And I'll cut through until the tree starts to lean then I'll get out of the road.
One thing that happens with these trees when they've been dead for a long time, when they hit the ground they nearly explode. And that of course has advantages, it makes it a bit easier to get firewood. A big white ant's nest in the centre of the base of the tree, but I don't think it goes far up the trunk. The rest of today, Sunday, is going to be used cutting up firewood, and then tomorrow we can start work. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.